Today I've got my second alternative card from the February 2021 Sending Hearts Paper Pumpkin. It's a little interactive slider card and we'll go over how to make it. Stay tuned to the end for a sneak peek of a new tutorial coming out for this snail from the Coordinating Snail Dit stamp set. I'm starting today's card by working on the snail first. I'm coloring up the snail with some stamp and write markers. Now I'm bringing in my shimmery crystal effects and I'm going to add a little extra texture and shine to the snail shell. I'm squeezing it out and then using the tip to push it out to the edges. Now, this is a pretty thick coat, so you're going to want to give it plenty of time to dry. It should be dry to the touch in maybe half an hour or so, which is why we're doing it first. Uh, but to let it fully dry, you might want to leave it for a few more hours or even overnight. This is one that I did last night, and uh, you can see that it's shiny. Unfortunately, it's hard to tell on camera, but there is some really nice shimmer there as well. Let's start with the Poppy Parade card base that came with the kit. I'm just going to cut it right down the middle. So we're only going to use one panel, and we can save the other half for um, something else. So I'm lining up the uh, score line with the center of the trimmer track and I'm just gonna cut that. Now because we've cut our card base in half, um, we need a separate card base. So for that, I am going to add a half a piece of Poppy Parade cardstock. Um, this is eight and a half by five and a half, and we are going to score at four and one quarter. And I just used my cutting plates. So I wanna make sure that it's out of the way, bringing up my scoring blade instead. Now we're set. For my inside panel, I have a piece of white cardstock that is three and a quarter by four and a half. And I will stamp my inside sentiment on that. I'm gonna stamp some of these little decorations on the bottom here. One thing that I like to do with my ink spots that I get in the kit is to put washi on one end so that I can flip it open and it acts as a hinge. I let that dry for a minute. Now I'm going to put it inside my card. So I've got my half a piece of uh, Poppy Parade card base, and then I'm going to bring in this strip of the Blushing Bride card base that I cut off from the last alternative card, and if you haven't seen that yet, I'll link to that below. I'm just going to use it to decorate this front panel, and I want to put it underneath our little mailbox panel, kind of like that. So let me go ahead and put adhesive first on this little strip. When I go to put it around this, I am going to put it all the way around the edges like I normally would, but I'm also going to be very careful to make sure that I'm getting some adhesive underneath this area because I want that to be very well attached right there, and you'll see why. 
So holding it up to the light so I can see where it is. I'm putting my finger there as a guide. I'm just gonna start and make sure that I get a good amount of adhesive all in that area. And then I'll go ahead and go around the edge like I normally would. down so that it's sort of centered against the red. Oops. Got myself a little cricket there, so let me pull that off. What I want to do next is I want to cut a slit right along the black edge of this mailbox here. Now if you have a craft knife, something like this, then that's probably the easiest way to do it, but I'm going to show you how you can also do it with just your trimmer. Take a post-it and you're going to use this post-it as a guide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up right along this black line here. When this is underneath the trimmer, it's going to get all covered up with the blade. It's going to be really difficult to see um, where to cut. So this is going to help us make sure that we're cutting in the correct place. So now we have a vertical guide. We also need some horizontal guides, so I'm going to bring in the rest of the pad. And I'm going to use this to line it up. I'm lining it up with this edge just so that I know that um, my horizontal line is going to be straight across because this thing is square. So now this tells me this is going to be the bottom edge of where I want to cut. Going to draw a line across. You can see that. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to give myself a guideline up at the top here. I want this top edge lined up with where the top of my cut is going to be, and I want this right edge lined up over here so that I know that this is straight and not wonky like this. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to draw in my line. Now I'm ready to cut. And I just want to show you that on the edge of the blade, there is this little notch and that's going to be, that helps you to know where the blade starts and stops. And because I have this guide, I know exactly where I need to place it. I'm going to line up this, the edge of the post-it with the center track on my trimmer. And now I'm going to line up my blade with this first horizontal line. And press down. And then I'm going to cut down to the bottom horizontal line. Now you are cutting through two layers at this point, so just take your time. So that gives us a slit right where we need it to be. We're going to make a slider now, and it's a pretty skinny piece, so oftentimes it's just easier to start out with something bigger than you need so that you could have something to hold on to as you trim it down. So let's make this um, three inches in length. Now for the width, I'm going to be paying attention to 
the markings on the right hand side. And I'm going to first put this at one quarter inch. Now I'm going to cut down, but not all the way. I'm only going to go to two and three quarter inches and then I'll stop. Okay, and lift. Now I'm going to move my paper over to the three quarter inch mark and do that same cut. So down just to two and three quarters. And the last move that I'm going to make is to move this over to the one inch mark. And this time I am going to cut the whole way. So it looks something like this with these two little flaps on the side. And at this point, the easiest thing to do is to just grab your snaps and cut off these two little side pieces here. So what we've created is uh, the slider that pulls out, and then on the end here, this is gonna be the stopper that prevents it from going too far. Now that we have our slider, we are going to feed it through this little slit that we had made earlier in the mailbox. So because you're going through two layers here, it might be a little stiff initially, so just be gentle with it. You don't wanna rip that um, nice cut that you had made earlier, but it will go through. And then what you'll see is, again, this is way longer than what we need, but it's better to be longer and have something to hold on to than to make it too short. So you're gonna be able to pull this in and out like this. Now, oftentimes, if I'm doing a slider, I will put um, a little collar piece in the back to um, kind of guide the angle at which the slider comes out. But in this case, it's such a short distance that we have to work with, and the angle doesn't really matter, I don't think. I think it looks fine no matter kind of, you know, how you pull this out. It's not gonna hurt anything, so I'm not gonna put a collar this time. What I am going to do, though, is to make sure that I try to leave myself as much room as possible um, so that I have more length of this slider to work with because that's what I'm going to end up stamping on. So rather than using the stamp and seal along here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some glue dots. So I've got a little bit more control over the width of the adhesive. You can also use tear and tape. I can get a good seal, but it will be a nice narrow margin that maximizes the amount of room that I have for my little slider to move around. I'm putting these glue dots very close together. I'm going to put stamp and seal all around the edges. I want to avoid adhesive in any areas where the slider is. If you wanted to put extra along these other areas, that's okay, but it's pretty strong adhesive and really not necessary. I'm gonna attach it to the card base now. And I wanna make sure that my little slider is out of the way as I'm doing that. So what I like to do um, is just to Pick one of the corners. I use my fingers as kind of a guide to make sure that those are lined up well. And then just carefully place down the rest of it. Okay, so now let's test and make sure that our little slider works fine and that nothing is stuck. So whenever you're doing anything with moving parts, you wanna test it often um, because it's easier to fix things if you catch them early. So now that I see that I've got good movement here, I'm going to push the slider piece back as far as it will go. 
So I want to cover this end of my slider with this cute little envelope. Now, where did I get that? It came from the Snail Mail DSP, which you can see I've cut out a bunch of different things from. Um, it coordinates perfectly um, because it's almost exactly the same size. If you don't have the DSP, that same envelope is, um, that same shape of envelope is available in the Snail Dit stamp set, and there's even a die to cut that out. If you don't have one of those, you can always draw your own envelope here. It's just a rectangle shape um, and you can choose to decorate it with some of the heart or flower embellishments that came with the kit. But I'm going to go ahead and glue my envelope on. Remember, I want to push the slider back as far as it will go before I put this on there. So reach for my glue. Let's turn this around. And put a little bit of glue here. When I go to glue this down, I'm being careful not to um, glue over this edge on the mailbox because then it won't move. You might want to put um, a scrap of paper or if you've got one of the silicone mats, you can slip it down underneath there so that you won't accidentally glue down to uh, the underside. Once my envelope is in place, I'll just use my snips to trim around And that's done. And pull out our slider and we can see that this gives us a little bit of length to be able to stamp a greeting. I decided to put my silicone mat back in because it's going to give me a little extra cushion for stamping and it's also going to help make sure that I don't accidentally stamp something underneath. There are a couple of sentiments that fit, uh, and I'm choosing the XOXO. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. The red inks, I find, tend to take a little bit longer. Once it's dried, we can finish decorating. We'll push this back in and bring in this black scallop element and I'm going to put it down along the bottom here. I think I'm going to bring it to the edge of the pink and then trim it off at this end. We have too much glue so I'm going to smooth it out with my pinky. That way I'm not going to uh, end up touching anything else with it because I usually heat my pinky out of the way. There we are. I'm going to snip off this extra and use uh, spare scissors so that I don't get glue on my snips because there's a little bit of extra here. I'll bring back my snail and put some dimensionals on the back. And peel the backing off. And I made a little bow with the ribbon in the kit. And I'll put that on with some uh, leftover mini glue dots.
I'm going to go in now and add some of these heart embellishments. The first heart that I'm going to add is to this envelope uh, on the back here, the one that was originally printed on the panel. Part of the reason, besides the fact that it just looks cute, is because it is going to help our slider stay lifted up off the page a little bit. That makes it easier to pull in and out. And then I'm going to add just some additional hearts all around just for fun. I hope that you enjoyed this dose of creativity and that you'll join me the next time. Before we go, I'm going to show you a preview of a project available as part of a tutorial bundle starting February 1st, and it uses this coordinating snail from the Snail Dit Stamp Set. Isn't he cute? It's going to be part of a tutorial bundle with four other designs and look for it to come out on February 1st. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.